Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yao. Today, I'm going to introduce serverless LLM, low latency serverless inference for large language models. And this is a joint work with Le Yang, uh, Ye Qi, Andre, Dimitri, Yuraj, and Luo. So, today, uh, we have seen booming large language model inference workloads since ChatGPT. Actually, uh, ChatGPT gains over 10 million users in just 40 days. And uh, now we can see a growing ecosystem of LLM-based workloads. Well, these workloads often demand for serving custom large language models because, well, users might want to open source models or their own fine-tuned models or just for custom large language model services. And uh, serverless can be a cost-effective solution here compared to traditional choices. For example, we could buy a GPU server, but that's expensive. And we can rent an uh, entire GPU server, but uh, we often leave it underutilized because those customer services might don't have stable and uh, uh, high demand. Well, uh, we can also use LM-based services such as Chat GPT, but uh, they often have usage limit and uh, we can't customize. So we need a pay-as-you-go model serving platform just like uh, GPU Uber. And actually, there are already huge interests from both industrial and uh, academia to uh, develop next generation AI serving system. And uh, here is a uh, system overview of serverless clusters. Well, we often have a controller and uh, many GPU servers. When receiving an inference request, uh, the request router asks the model loading scheduler to co start a model instance. Uh, co start happens a lot in serverless clusters. And the model loading scheduler will allocate a GPU server to start a new inference process, which then downloads the model from a model repository, for example, Hugging Face Hub, and then loads the model into GPUs. Well, when serving the re inference request, uh, the large language model takes tokens as input and computes KV cache, which will be used later. And in each iteration, we generate one new token and return it to the user. And uh, the token will be used as the input of the next iteration until an EOS token is generated. Uh, in large language model inference, there are two metrics matter. Uh, time to first token, the time to return the first token to the user, and time per OPPO token, that is the time between each token response. Well, large language model poses uh, unique challenges for cold start. Here is a uh, measure latency of each cold start time, uh, each cold start step of different models. Well, we can observe that uh, uh, downloading and loading a model takes over 70% of total time to first token latency. And uh, this is 20 times of what a user expected. So how can we solve this problem? Um, of course, we can always oversubscribe servers, right? But uh, that will be very expensive. Or we can cache some models in a DRAM cache, but DRAM often has limited capacity compared to large language models. Or we can deploy additional storage servers, but uh, those servers with a high-speed network connection are also very expensive. So uh, our approach is quite straightforward. We want to support effective local checkpoint storage on GPU servers, which can provide substantial capacity and uh, bandwidth. Most importantly, they are largely idle during model inference. Well, however, we need to uh, consider several design concerns uh, to enable this idea. First, given a GPU server with very complex storage hierarchy, how can we fully harness the bandwidth on GPU servers? And uh, second, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Second, uh, in a serverless cluster, there are many GPU servers, and uh, how can we select the GPU servers to minimize the loading time? So to solve the first uh, uh, concern, we propose a new checkpoint format. Why? Because existing checkpoint formats are often de designed for training scenarios where we persist many times to uh, debug or for the failure recovery, but we only load a few times. And uh, uh, however, in serverless scenario, we have frequent cold starts. So we want to persist the model checkpoints 
once after training and load it many times. And this mismatch causes a very poor performance when loading a model using existing loaders such as PyTorch. Well, here is our proposed CoStar friendly checkpoint loading with the loading optimized checkpoint. We still uh, keep model execution files such as the Python scripts, JSON configurations in the checkpoint, and, but uh, we extract the tensor data and partition them according to their target devices into separate files. We also uh, record a tensor index file which maps the tensor name to its GPU ID uh, offset and size. Well, when loading the model, uh, inference process initialize the model uh, in host memory based on the model execution files. In the meantime, a model manager, a separate model manager, loads the checkpoint data via a multi-tier loading subsystem into a co corresponding GPU memory. Well, even before the data is fully loaded, the inference process can calculate a tensor address based on the tensor index file and the base memory address of the uh, GPU memory. So this decoupled design enables us to overlap uh, model initialization and the data loading. And also it uh, ensures that our loading optimization is independent to the model format. Well, it also avoids blocking GPUs uh, from waiting for uh, uh, tensor creation. So we can apply any uh, reading optimization techniques to accelerate the loading. And here is a detailed discussion of our fast and predictable multi-tier loading system. Well, first, we pipeline the model loading across multiple uh, storage hierarchy, and then we apply uh, multiple IO threads for each stage to fully harness the storage bandwidth. And uh, we apply direct I.O. when loading a uh, checkpoint data from SSD into host memory. And finally, we maintain a trunk-based pinned memory pool to uh, cache those frequently used models in the host memory uh, to accelerate uh, next loading. And uh, we also have uh, GPU, uh, we also have I.O. queues in the global model loading schedule to make sure that uh, each IO link is exclusively used to guarantee the predictable loading performance. Uh, overall, Solis LLM delivers five to eight times faster loading compared to existing systems. Well, here are some interesting results we want to present. Uh, this figure shows the normalized throughput of different loading systems on different storage media uh, from bottom to top. Uh, the bandwidth of storage media increases from 100 megabytes per second to uh, 16, uh, uh, sorry, 13 gigabytes per second. Well, we can find that uh, Thurlis LLM constantly achieves uh, full bandwidth utilization compared to existing systems. Okay, so now we have fast loading system on each uh, server. So when we have multiple servers, how can we schedule um, model requests, uh, sorry, startup requests to, to the uh, different servers? We argue that live migration is crucial for uh, locality-driven inference. Why? So uh, this figure shows uh, on the left, we have model A in DRAM of server one and the GPU of server two. And we also have model B on SSD of server one and uh, uh, DRAM of server two. So now model A is doing inference on server two, and we want to start up model B. Uh, an availability-driven policy, which is often used in service systems, will allocate model B on server one because there is a free GPU. However, that means we need to load model B from SSD, which is super slow. And uh, next, a preemption-driven policy uh, finds that, okay, model B is cached in DRAM of server two, so let's preempt model A and schedule model A on server one and schedule uh, model B on server two so that model B uh, can achieve fastest uh, first token latency. However, 
Model A's results need to be recomputed, and uh, therefore, Model A experienced a very long in interruption time. Well, what about live migration? Well, we still have Model A on Serial 2, and we want to start Model B. Instead of immediately preempting Model A, we load Model A on Serial 1 while Serial 2 is still generating. And after loading, we do a quick, efficient live migration to migrate the uh, inference on Model A to Serial 1, and we load Model B on Serial 2. So in this case, Model B's first token, first token latency is low, while Model A's uh, inference is not interrupted. And next, I'm going to show how to achieve efficient live migration for uh, large language model inference. So here, the challenge is that uh, we have very large inference state, that is the KV cache, which can be up to tens of gigabytes. And uh, uh, to do live migration for large language models, we need to migrate uh, those KV cache. Uh, on the other side, we have strict time per OPPO token, for example, of 50 milliseconds uh, to avoid interrupting users' experience. So our first observation is that uh, token is actually much smaller than KV cache. So instead of migrating the KV cache, we migrate current tokens to the destination server and recompute the KV cache for these tokens. Well, the question is that uh, uh, if Recomputing KV cache is fast enough so that the destination server can catch with the source server. Fortunately, the answer is yes, because recomputing KV cache is essentially the prefill stage and uh, it's faster, much faster than decoding stage. So, for example, uh, when we recompute KV cache for 1,000 tokens on destination server, source server can only generate 100 new tokens and then we migrate these new tokens. We repeat this process multiple times until the gap is small enough. And, uh, and then we, send, we end the live migration process and send the current uh, 10 tokens to a destination server. So only this time uh, is the interruption time, which is very low. OK, so that's how we achieve efficient uh, live migration. And then, OK, now we have uh, fast loading on each server and uh, efficient, efficient live migration for locality-driven allocation. We need to combine them and consider how to do locality-aware GPU allocation. So in this case, uh, we want to consider loading model A either on server one or server two. So we compare that, okay, on server one, we can load model A from DRAM, which is very fast. Well, on server B, uh, on server two, we need to load model A uh, from SSD that is lower. And uh, the reason that we can calculate with such a simple equation is that uh, our system guarantees the exclusive usage of each IO link. And next, let's consider a more complex scenario. Now we want to uh, load the model B, and uh, we have two options. Option one, we can directly load the model B from SSD on server one. That means uh, the bandwidth is lower. Or we have another choice. We can uh, migrate model A from server two to server one, and then we load model B on server two. Well, because loading from uh, host memory is much faster than SSD, and most importantly, we find that uh, the migration time of a model is actually predictable. So the red figure shows uh, the prefilling latency which means uh, computing the KV cache uh, versus the sequence length of a LAMA model on a single A100, you can find that the relationship is almost linear uh, given uh, hardware and batch size. So now we can, comp uh, we can calculate uh, the two options, the latency of two options, and decide which one has lower latency, and then we choose it. Uh, so now let's put entire serverless LM in action. We find that uh, uh, given same RPS uh, request per second, serverless LM only needs uh, four times fewer GPU to achieve similar uh, latency. And uh, given same number of GPUs, we can serve uh, over five times throughput, has a higher throughput. And in conclusion, 
we present low latency service inference for large language models with fast checkpoint loading, live migration of LM inference, and storage-aware scheduling. So this is our first step towards affordable custom large language model for everyone. And our code is open source as GitHub. We welcome uh, well collaborations from the community. And uh, thank you.